organizations um, as the complication continues. And I'm also really glad that you thought this was a good opportunity to get to know each other better. These questions. And obviously you have a lot of energy for that. So that's great. website called wearesaltandlight.org and I hope you'll all go get a copy of Communities of Salt and Light and there are postcards that will help you remember the wearesaltandlight.org website uh, URL address. The We Are Salt and Light website has right now, there will be more, but it has 50 stories of Catholics actually living their faith as disciples at home, in the neighborhood, and abroad from all different kinds of settings in the United States. It has links and actual presence of over 101 resources. It has videos, and there'll be more of those. So I have a selection of three of the stories, but I recommend Michael's stories in your packet as well, because it's really the same thing. How have we been living our faith? How are we living our faith? And what are some examples to inspire us? So this particular example um, involves uh, St. Catherine of Siena, a group in uh, the Diocese of Austin. There's a youth pro-life team who organizes prayer for the parish when an execution takes place. There's a monthly meeting to engage in pro-life issues from womb to tomb, including abortion, human trafficking, euthanasia, and the death penalty. The youth team takes the lead in organizing prayer for the parish community for the, any time there's an execution in Texas, and they lead all who gather in praying the rosary for mercy. And they see how this prayer helps the community reflect and act on our Catholic commitment to protecting the life and dignity of all God's children, no matter who they are or what they've done. And that this prayer together leads to challenging but respectful conversation about human life and dignity and our call as Catholics. Here's another one of the 50 stories. This is about a religious community of sisters who've learned about the crisis of human trafficking in the United States. They wanted to prevent human trafficking and assist victims in their archdiocese. So the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur partnered with nine other congregations and a parish women's group to take action. Since hotels, particularly during sporting events, tend to be popular sites for exploitation, they've worked to educate over 70 hotel and motel managers about human trafficking. If the managers are open to helping, they give them bars of soap with trafficking hotline information. The ministry has also made presentations to churches and civic groups and created curriculum for Catholic schools to raise awareness of human trafficking. They extend the mercy and love of Christ to victims of trafficking through financial, emotional, and spiritual support. Their work to educate and prevent the injustice of human trafficking is their response to the gospel call to proclaim liberty to captives and let the oppressed go free. And the final story, and there are many more, a parish, St. Vincent de Paul, in Germantown, Pennsylvania, experienced a merger of three parishes, and they wanted a way to get to know one another and unite their community of faith. They became involved with a group called Philadelphians Organized to Witness and Power and Rebuild that helped them conduct a listening campaign that taught them to listen to each other. They also found a common purpose of getting engaged in a living wage campaign with other congregations that took them out into the neighborhood to listen to the concerns of people and to inform them about an upcoming piece of legislation. The door knocking and phone banking was very discouraged, often discouraged local voters, helped them get out the vote and pass the living wage bill with 76% voter approval. The parish's work to listen and engage has helped us to live out the gospel and make the world become flesh in our neighborhood community. St. Vincent Paul Parish, that was just an accident. <laughs> so this is the end of my presentation. 
And I would like to thank you very much for listening. I'd like to thank you very much for your witness. I'd like to thank you very much for all that you do and how you step out every day in the love of Jesus and how you are salt and light for the Diocese of Boise. Thank you. We have about a half an hour for questions or comments, so uh, don't go too far away. <laughs> um, if you wrote questions on the index cards on your table, if you'd hold those up, and either Mark or I will come and...